Welcome to another episode of RCAF. Thanks for being here. Uh, today, I've got Whitney Holburn. Hi. Hey, what's up, Whitney? How's it going? So you're a painter, a muralist, uh, an amazing person. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you. How did you get so great? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's a loaded question. I know it is. <laughs> But thanks for being here. We're in <laughs> Louisville welcome. right now. We're doing a mural together. Oh, this is up. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you designed this really awesome mural, and uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. Thanks for I'm including me. I'm happy to me. have you. We yeah. are happy to have you. It's become quite the group project. For yeah, sure. definitely. So it's taken uh, on a lot bigger um, meaning and just a uh, whole different vibe since it started. So Sure. I'm stoked on it. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. Right, uh, let's go. I mean... <laughs> What inspired you? Um, what inspires me? Or, or just talk about the, the process of this mural in particular, how it came um, about. Just for the one specifically? Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, um, it's, you know, based around and in regards to the, um, you know, Black Lives Movement, um, mm -hmm. you know, in regards with, like, police brutality and everything. And, um, you know, Louisville's my hometown. Love it here. Yeah. Um, and, you know... In Denver, we were kind of like really into the protests and, you know, Denver was able to find um, some legislation um, pretty quickly and some peace pretty quickly. Um, I know there's shit still going on right now that's kind of sketchy and shady, but um, we did some big things. There's a lot more than needs to be done, obviously, but, you know, it's kind of more personal here, obviously, um, yeah. with Brianna Taylor right. and David McAtee. Um, so, um, you know, I wanted to help more. I think that's what we're all here is we just want to right. help. This whole wall has been completely donated and funded by people, you know, people, homies, friends, yeah. supporters so that want to help, you know, and this also gives people an opportunity to help when they don't know how to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's just based on that. Um, you know, it definitely has, you know, my kind of style in some areas or whatever, but the focus was really to be, um, on Brianna and Sandra and Ahmad and Elijah um, and George, of course, and David McAtee. Um, I wanted to highlight Brianna and David because it's Louisville. Um, right. but I think they're all really important cases. I really wanted to put Elijah McLean on there. Um, <clears throat> mainly cause you know, it's Colorado. Um, right. it's a Colorado case and we're close to that. And mm -hmm. I, his story was probably one of the most heartbreaking. So, um, yeah, I really wanted his, his case to be out there. Um, cause you know, since I've been here, I haven't really heard many people that, um, at least to, who I've talked to, you know, um, that don't really know about his case, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and of course, you know, it's always the thing with murals is, um, you know, they're they're in front of your face all the time, whether right. you want them to be or not. You know, people are just going about their day day day, day lives, so um, it really like creates an impactful message. The bigger things are, mm -hmm. and that's something I've always um, somebody you know mentor back in the day like t told me. You know, um, bigger is always going to make b a bigger statement, and I really wanted their faces to be as large as possible could you imagine if like all of their faces like if every one of our artist homies like just took the time to do one little banger somewhere or, like mm -hmm. you know a wall get, get get a wall donate your time just for this one how many faces we would have up you right. know I, I believe like america obviously in history is just like it's pretty obvious that we forget history after mm -hmm. so long or just people in general too yeah yeah, yeah 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 and you know because you know this is you know we've had to go through this so many times you know um and about discrimination and uh yeah i think it's because we forget you know people just tend to go about their lives and you know if every one of us did a wall mm -hmm. the, it would be a lot harder to forget for sure right yeah you know um so it's so kind of that, like a reminder yeah to to not or to just what do i want to say here to just be vigilant for uh yeah just and even, the bullshit and even if we on. go about our days you know what i mean um that visual representation is still there. Right. You know what I mean? So it's almost impossible if, you know, history is forgotten again, you know, in 50 years, um, and this has to happen again. That's what we're trying to change. You know what I mean? That we don't have to do it again, but it'd be a lot harder for us to forget it when we're having to cover it, you know, all those things up. So, right. you know, inspiration behind the mural is just, you know, I wanted their faces to be as big as possible um, and just leave a mark and bring something positive, you know, to our community um, because art does that. You know? Absolutely. 
Yeah, but do you think it has like the power to heal? When I mean, I don't know life without art, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I think so for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I do too. Um, just for the it, record, I think people that don't like bother with art or have art in their life, or you know, maybe they don't understand it or whatever. I think that if they try to or try to incorporate it in their life somehow, like it, it like reflects in so many other aspects of your life. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Emotionally, mentally, physically, sometimes you know. Totally. I saw this. Uh, I think it was like an infographic on USA Today. Can I light this blunt? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which, by the way, apologies you don't for have my to, voice. <laughs> you don't have to apologize way too many or blunts. ask. Um, cool. We just did a podcast with Braylon. He smoked like one and a half blunts. I know, but his voice doesn't sound like this. So That's okay. okay. Cool. It's okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to do well, it anyways. Now we, now we know why your voice sounds like that. <laughs> and we have a visual blunts. representation. <laughs> um, no, but I saw this thing in USA Today where it was like, top non-essential workers and it was artists and i was like that's fucking bullshit well see the <laughs> art is essential i mean i'm not gonna i mean i mean i get that it's not like like if we went into full full on crisis mode like you'd have to be creative in other ways but i mean maybe that's the all definition of art you know, is yeah of what's important to some people and what's important to other people yeah um you know i worked on this farm in california and i um i had this homie that worked for us and he was telling me about this book, and I can't recall the name of it, but it basically just touched on how there's two people. There's more practical people who build things and, yeah. um, you know, more math, ma- mathematical ma- minds and stuff like that. And then there's, you know, artists. And he was saying that one can't really exist without the other. Absolutely, um, yeah. So even if there are people who aren't more creatively driven, um, they balance out the people like us because thank God there are doctors oh, out there. God. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Or people who... Thank God. I don't know. Just people who do the accounting. Oh, my God. Math. I know tons of accountants, and they're killing it. Who knows math? Does anyone out there know math? (laughs) I mean, I know math, but, like, I don't know math, you know? It does sound hard. Um, But, yeah, shouts to those people. I mean, maybe... Yeah. Someone can start a show called Mathy AF or something like that. <laughs> not us. Not us. Definitely not me. Won't be there for that one. <laughs> but let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about how you got into painting and making okay. visual art. All can right. we just lay it on us? Um, well, as a career or as just something I did. We can just go through the whole thing. Okay. You know. I mean, I've always drawn. I've always had a little bit. Um, my mother is an amazing artist. My dad's father is an amazing artist. So it's kind of, you know, that creative gene is already in me visually. I'm mm-hmm. a very visual person. But um, so I knew I could like paint and draw. I had some type of like, you know, natural skill. Um, but I didn't really like think it was possible um, as a career because to touch on, you said that article that told you that the least essential job is an artist. Yeah. Um, and I really feel like we obviously know that's not true and a lot of people agree with us, but I really feel like, um, we're kind of taught to feel that way yeah, about yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that it's not practical and it's not logical. Um, and I used to think like that as well. So I never really did it a lot. I would do it for homies or whatever, but I never really did it a lot because, you know, I didn't think it, you know, I needed to use my time for, you know, to pay my bills. Right. Basically, right. You know? Yeah. And that's how, but that's how we're raised. Right. And it's not like a bad way to be raised at all, but it's also, I think very, untrue (laughs) yeah absolutely I couldn't be further from the truth actually um and I feel like after traveling you know and then I I went to school for photo not for art because I didn't think you know you could be a painter you were trying to be practical yeah so I could do my painting on the side and you know that's how I was raised and how a lot of people are and that makes sense you know pay your bills put a roof over your head um it's not a bad way to think but I think it when we like tell ourselves that like it limits us um to potential because we were already talent limiting ourselves, you know, we're like, we can't do that, you know? Right. Again, it's fair, but you know, so I didn't really make a lot of art, you know, I knew I could paint, I would do things here and there traveling, but like I went to school for photo. It's just as hard to get a job in the photo oh, I industry. Bet. I mean, it, literally any creative job. Um, but, um, I did finally get a photo or a job there, but I was still working for somebody else. And I started kind of pursuing my art really heavily in, as a career. I met, um, a group of really talented artists in Tampa and St. Pete. Nice. Shouts um, to them. Yeah. I want to say hi to Becky Biakis. Hi. Hi, Becky. <laughs> um, she is my art mentor. Um, uh, my homie, Cam. Uh, what up, Cam? Yeah, Cam's the man. Um, Cam's the man. I also met Sebastian Coolidge. Shouts. That's my boy. Um, but when I started painting, um, I kind of surrounded myself. I kind of went with this like viewpoint that 
you know, you can't paint as a, you know, for a living, you can't do it. Um, and I kind of met this group and, um, they really taught me that you can, (laughs) not that they they didn't have to teach me. I just watched them do it. Right. Um, so, and I learned a lot from them and, um, the business side of it, you know, Becky was a big, a big mentor in my life. I try to spread her word, but, um, yeah, she, she was just amazing. But she, she, when you see people actually go from wanting something and achieving that and you see the work, Mm -hmm. it, you think it's hard, but it's really not, um, it's because you'll, if you're not hustling that you're hustling something else, you know, working just to pay your bills, any, any kind of job. Um, and when you're doing that and working for other people, it's like really scary to like not have that stability, but the people that are succeeding, you know, on painting for a living are the ones that are making art every day. Mm -hmm. And they're not taking that eight hours away every day. Um, and they're using that time to put themselves out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and you never really how crucial that is until you make that leap and you're just like, fuck it. I mean, I did the nine to five and I curated and, you know, I ran a collective in Tampa with all these homies and I was throwing art shows for other people. I was throwing shows for us and, you know, I was working that nine to five and it was great and it helped get, you know, my feet going Mm -hmm. as a career. Um, but I was just constantly busy. You know what I mean? It's like, if I was sitting still, it was fucking weird. You know what I mean? Totally. But that's the hustle and the grind that, um, you have to have if you, if you want to put yourself out there and work nine to five, but you know, and that thankfully got me to a position where I could do it full time. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah. Do you think that it's, uh, but yeah, so I, I feel like that with like being an artist, it's hard to just, for me at least, it was hard to keep myself like on a schedule, you know? Yeah, like, that's always hard. The the transition from like being like, this is when you work set by, you know, whoever, Whole mm-hmm. Foods or whatever. Yeah. To like, oh, now I'm my own boss. So I don't have to answer to a boss really. But then at the, you, I realized that, yes, I do have to answer to a boss. Yeah. Because if I don't do Your my work. Your success and failure is up to yeah, you completely. Exactly. And that's also, but I also, you know, hearing you like talk about it, like I know that feeling all artists do that, you know, make that leap and you're trying to figure out how to do this properly and allocate your time properly. Um, Mm -hmm. But if you weren't doing it for that, you'd be doing it for something else. You know what I mean? I I think that's all like, yeah, part of the process of um, growing and that that kind of stuff forces you to figure it out. Um, And you'll never feel that way unless you try it, you know, unless you like get rid of all that other like, you know, nine to five or whatever else you're wasting your time with that totally. not doing something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, that ever, that's pretty much a typical question. Like any artist, I think gets asked, you know, it's like, how do you allocate your time or what do you do? Like, yeah. how can you, you know, it's self-discipline, but learning, um, learning that discipline is a part of the growing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's a part of, you know, figuring out what direction you're going and what you need. Now, you know, it's all very subjective to what you want to do, you know? Yeah. yeah but totally. I struggle with that too, but, um, you know, I, I feel like too, it's, that's a I, that what I've learned harder. is that it's more about like my current energy state rather than being on like a, for me at least, like rather than being on some sort of strict schedule, like, Oh, I wake up at seven every morning and you know, yeah, and it works for some people, whatever. you know, yeah. and that's cool. And like, but you know, but the thing is at the end of the day, like we're taught that like, you know, that's another thing Like we're taught, like we need to be on a schedule. We have right. to be on a schedule and it does help. It does help a lot of things for me personally, because I can't be all over the place, you know? Yeah. I want to put, Same. I want to do so many things at once, you yeah. know? Um, so that it does work, but also like there is really no schedule to anything in life, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, yeah. And, but I mean, I mean, it's real though, because yeah. you know, there are days that you're, your emotions and your energy, you know, we're surrounded by so much different energy every day. And it's just like, there's days when your energy is incompatible with your schedule right? and we're meant to feel bad about that. Or like, that's, that's not part of the growing process or I need to not do that. You know what I mean? Right. right. Obviously there's, you know, if you're going to sit in and, you know, smoke blunts and not work, you know what I mean? Like that's obviously your fault. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, I think you, you know, it's, your own like the whole schedule thing it's it does work but uh, you know i think that's part of you know trying to like put yourself out there and like taking that step you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's like figuring it out like but that's why people make you know are successful with what they want to do because they're the only ones willing to do it right and you You gotta have self-awareness yeah you know yeah true i feel like self-awareness is key just knowing how you're feeling in the moment how much energy you have and 
just diving in when you've yeah. got it, you know? And it's crazy because, and to touch back on what we were saying, I, um, you know, I used to believe that, like, you know, you have to do this in order to do this, like, pay your bills first, you know, take care of yourself, like, you can't really do what you love, you know, and I can't, I thought that way for a really long time, but mm-hmm. after all these travels and meeting these people and seeing it and seeing what it actually takes and the difference, you know, it's like this light switch turned on and I, I can never think like that ever again. Right. I, yeah. I, can't, I you know, always wanted to, to do things and I, you know, it's that thing, it's like, you know, you remember like when you wish you, you know, you wanted what you already have right now, you know, and it's like, that's just so true if you really work for things, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it's like, people don't understand how easy it is to accomplish, but it's just a matter of doing them, you know, and that means just like being unstable and not yeah. knowing where you're at, it's yeah. going to come from. Yeah. It's just taking that first step yeah. and being comfortable with like the unknown. Place yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, I could never think like, I guess you want to say practical like that yeah, ever yeah. again. Like it's so weird because I literally can do like anything. Right. You, once Save you realize one. you can do anything, <laughs> there's no going back. Yeah, for sure. Um, so let's get back to your story. You're in Tampa and you're throwing art shows with your friends. Yeah. You've got a few mentors. And what happens next? Um, I decided to grow weed in California. So kind of ditched decision. that whole plan. Um, <laughs> you know, it's really cool. The Tampa art scene is very contemporary and it, you know, Becky is a very professional artist and she taught me a lot about kind of just branding yourself and getting started. And it was a really great place and art community. We all like loved each other and supported each other so much. Um, but you know, it taught me a lot, but you know, I wanted to not do the nine to five and be busy all the time. And I was like, I'm just going to go to California. And Mm -hmm. my boyfriend at the time had property out there and I was like, I can not have a job. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I can, you know, live off, you know, I lived off grid for like six months or six months, eight months or whatever. Um, you know, go do that and experience a different life and, you know, paint, you know, at this mm-hmm. point I got really into the growing side though, because I lived in bumfuck. There was nothing out there. So, it was literally <laughs> called bumfuck California, wasn't it? <laughs> it's called Doris, California oh. and it sucks. <sighs> Doris. <laughs> It's not bad. It's, they were they didn't like us, so whatever, it's fine. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah, no. yeah, they were mean. They were so mean. But it's like a town of seven hundred people. Well, it's too long of a story. Yeah. But anyway, well, so I'm sure they're you know doing their thing now. I mean, it was it wasn't you know, but uh, when you look back at it, it you know, even though it, I didn't really, I did still paint a little bit, but like I got really into growing weed and I was working my ass off like 12, 15 hour days like, in a hundred degree weather, oh. 115 in our greenhouse. Yeah. So and we had like you know, a lot to attend to, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's always something to do in the garden. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So, but it taught me a lot about myself and, you know, I, I, you know, being so busy, like I said earlier, when I would start for start painting and stuff, like, right. you know, I couldn't sit still and here I am, like, that's all I was doing was sitting still. And like, I dealt, I was sitting in a camper with no running water. You know, I mean, we had generators, but right, right. no electricity, like no cell phone service. And like, and I just sat in this 30 foot camper and painted like a whole solo show. Um, Cause after nice. the season, I was going to go back to St. Pete and have my first like solo show. And um, yeah. So, and I was really just dealing with my energy like the entire time. Like I wasn't on the phone, couldn't get on my phone. Like, right. um, and you think, you know who you are until you do shit like that. <laughs> um, so it definitely, even though I wasn't making art out there, it was like, you know, very, it was a lot of crazy shit. It's wild out there. Um, but what, like, do you, do you want to tell any crazy I stories? I mean, just, it's, you know, it's a ton of summer people. It's where people, bad people go when they don't want to be found. There's a lot of just Got really it. bad people out there and, um, you know, drug addicts, like just bad stuff, you know? Gotcha. And you know, it's very underfunded cause it's so small and like there's one, there's one cop, one cop in that town and his name is, his last name is weed. Isn't that crazy? That's wild. <laughs> Do you think he smoked weed? No, but yeah. he, is t- he said he, he was really cool. What's up, man? He was chill? No, he was chill as fuck. Um, but he, yeah, we were really cool, but he was, uh, I guess his, there was a town about 40 minutes south of us called Weed, California, and they um, had really harsh weed laws, so they didn't really, but they, weird. they like made bank off. They would it'd be like, we love, I love weed or whatever. And they'd sell shirts there. And it's like, and then you come in, they, they're not, bust you uh, they're for not like that nice, <laughs> but no, it, it's whatever. It was, it was a great time. And we, um, uh, it's a little crazy, but, yeah. uh, yeah, 
I don't know. We don't have to do story time. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Well, okay, so you got the fuck out of Dolores yeah, or whatever. Yeah, Doris. Dolores. <laughs> anyway. Dolores, California. Shouts. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, okay. But yeah, so I left there. That's There's a way longer story to that. But I left there and I came here, basically. Yeah. Well, I traveled across the country, actually. Um, after the second season, I... I came to Louisville actually and I threw an art show on my way to Virginia and then we went to Florida and then I went to Cali and moved here. And okay. Yeah, it was rough, but we did it. <laughs> but yeah, so I came here and I just went full steam ahead like on my art. I had this, you know, knowledge um, when I first started in Tampa, um, you know, when I was first learning or whatever. And I knew like, I mean, I already knew a bunch of people here, mm -hmm. you know, like Chris Bolin, what's up? I love you. Shouts, Bull. <laughs> Yeah. He'll love that shouts. Doctor's orders. Um, but <laughs> yeah. But um yeah, so I already knew people here, so it's not like it was and I had you know, been doing it for a little bit, so it wasn't like new by any means. But So when you say here you mean Denver. Though. Denver, yeah. sorry. Because we should mention again that we are in Louisville right now. Louisville, yeah. Kentucky. K Y. And we are in the soon to be legendary Derby City market. Yeah, it's a warehouse legendary. full of funky finds and awesome antiques, and you know I'm trying to I'm trying to do an ad for Justin at some point. You know I don't know if he wants to sponsor the podcast. I don't know where he is, but what's up, Justin? What's up? What's up, Justin? What's up? Shouts. <laughs> anyway, Denver. You moved to Denver. <laughs> yeah, I moved to Denver like yeah. two and a half years ago, and you okay. know the community there is amazing. We all know this. Mm -hmm. um, Everyone there is just, it's an amazing place to be. So a lot everyone of art, cares about art. A lot art. of art coming out of Denver and Colorado yeah. in general. Music, yeah, it's just the epicenter, in my yeah. opinion. So, I agree. It's been a great place. You know, you put yourself in a place of opportunity with, you know, um, knowledge already. Things happen. Yeah. If you put yourself out there, you know, and that's what it's about, <laughs> in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Nice. But, yeah, so then here we are. Thanks for coming on. But... <laughs> It's been wild ride. Yeah. I bought the ticket though. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, yeah, you feel like those experiences that you went through just make it that much sweeter now that you're just doing what you love and making a living off of it. Yeah. I feel like if you do anything with passion, you, you know, and that's what I'm super passionate about. So like, although I did just really get into spray paint like two years ago, mm. but I'm so in love with it. It's my favorite thing ever. Yeah. I thought I knew what my passion was. That's what, What's so cool about? It can change. Growing up, yo. Yeah. <laughs> your the, your direction can change. Yeah. Your, like, target can change. Yeah. I think it's, like, it's just a powerful tool to be able to do something so large, so quickly, you know. I We've agree. been working on this mural for, a couple, like, what, like, five days. Four. Yeah, but it hasn't even been full days, like. Right. Sometimes yeah. five hours, sometimes nine hours. I'm, I think I know what can control means now. Yeah. <laughs> like, a little bit. <laughs> I mean. I'm not, I'm not great. But different for know, everybody for sure yeah. it's fun to learn a new skill too it's like it's my favorite it, you have to con like you can't just half-ass it like yeah. it's literally impossible to half-ass it because you're so engrossed in what you're doing yeah every li i'm like following every line of the spray and i'm like that was a little bit off what about this you know dude it's the know. best see it's that's so why great. i'm like you know always trying to do bigger walls because it gives you so many i mean you have to, it gives you so much experience and right like it, it's another thing it's like forces you to figure it out you yeah know? yeah and so and you get really quick experience but it's all because you're like learning so like we were talking about it earlier we we're like i was like we're gonna learn so much shit <laughs> dude yeah i feel like i worked I've, a lift your girl knows how to work a lift yeah <laughs> working a lift it's a lot easier than i thought it would be yeah you know yeah it really is i mean you know it's kind of like a joystick thing. yeah as long as you don't stop it too fast yeah. You know, or turn, I mean, this was, this is our up. first time working a lift, so we, it's I think probably we're more dangerous. It. Oh, nice. He, Braylon's got a trophy over there. <laughs> oh, nice. Fuck yeah. Give me uh, something good. So, uh. <laughs> what's up? Oh, man. Hit me I with it. ask you. Oh, yeah. What are, what are some of your influences? Um. I, you know, I get asked, you know, we get asked that question, obviously, but I think my artwork, if, if 
you're looking at my artwork, like influence in my art. It's, yeah. Um, I think it, mine is just a collective of everyone I've like really met and has like taught me stuff. It's my style is like changing and evolving quite rapidly. I think. Um, totally. But because of those influences and shit, but uh, that is my favorite artist uh, and like m- yeah. the movement that kind of inspired me was. Um, like Kazmir Malevich, he was. Um, I don't know who that is. You're about is it to the educate art, me. art suprematism movement? Did I say it? it was like suprematism, or, but it was like when they just did like black squares and triangles oh, okay. and like yeah, it was um, yeah, uh, it, it was like him and Kandinsky and okay. Pierre Mondrian. Gotcha. Excuse my pronunciations. <laughs> I'm not the best at that. <laughs> also you don't pretty know dumb. French. <laughs> I took French for three years and I do not know French. I don't either. <laughs> I took it for three years. I went years to France too. and I learned so much more in the like two weeks I was there. Yeah. Did French people let you talk to them in French? They did. They would never let me. I mean, I, I think there. they'd appreciate trying. <laughs> <laughs> not in my experience. I was like, you know. <laughs> See I think play they would. I and they're let. like, no, I, I speak nice English people. to you. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah. Pierre any, Mondrian. Anyways, yeah. Your influences. So if anyone doesn't know that they did the squares and Pierre Mondrian did kind of like the black and white grid with like one red square, like a blue square and a yellow square and kind of random boxes or not so random, who knows? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, the movement was just basically, it was like the first time, you know, they weren't painting like classical flowers and all these right, oils. Right. And, um, and I think it was like ap- right after the Dada movement, I'm pretty sure, mm-hmm. right before surrealism. But um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it was cool because no one had really ever done that before. And they basically, like, Kandinsky wrote this whole book called Concerning the Spiritual and Art. And I honestly used to hate that art. Or not hate it. Not hate it, that's a strong word. Just like but a, I, didn't, I didn't get it. And just I was like, like abstract. I'm like a black completely. square. Like, anyone yeah, yeah. can do that, right? Yeah, I get yeah. it. And so I used to have this viewpoint on this whole movement. And I got really inspired by it because that's why if you look in all my paintings, I have shapes. I have triangles and squares. Um, but I, every single painting I do, I put some kind of shape component in it and, um, component in a, but yeah, anyways, so, but Kandinsky wrote this book and it basically was like saying how shapes are like the building blocks of life and yeah. spirituality and, um, and it was this whole movement based on that. And I had no idea that whole movement was like, you know, that deep fucking deep, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, um, I really liked it a lot. Um, and you know, it talks about how, you know, how strong shapes are like the triangle is like the strongest shape and that you can build, you know, form you can build. And, um, totally. I don't know, that sounds really fucking cool to me. And, uh, but Kazmir Malevich, he did this, um, black square. Um, and he, like back in the day, he was like, you know, where he was from, I, I want to say Russia. Don't quote me on that, sounds but I'm like pretty sure Russia. over there. But during that time, like, um, you know, when you wanted to alter your, like, God, like, you know, Pope or whatever they, well, you know, you would put it in the corner of like the, in a room, if you like look up into the top corner, you like put it kind of like in the center, like catty corner, you know? So it's like facing and that was like your alt, that was like your idol or whatever. And like yeah. Kazmir Malevich had this show and it was like super controversial because he like took this black square and like put it up in that corner, you mm. know, at the start show. And I'm pretty sure he got arrested for it. Don't what? quote me on that. Yeah. Oh, well, like it was, he covered it, the little altar? Well, it just, you know, cause back then like religion was like way more Yeah. Was this important. at the turn of the 20th century or something? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was like, right. Before yeah. Before that probably. Again, um, it's fuzzy. Yeah. This was a lot. This was that scared. Um, Mark looked when, that up for us too. <laughs> Mark, get it for us. <laughs> <laughs> what was um, the movement called again? It was like the arts. I think it's like su- supre- suprematism. Like it's S-U-P art. Suprematism? Yeah. Or S-U-R or S-U-P-R-E-M-A. T I S M. Yeah. Just look up Supreme. I'm sure that'll, <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll bring up. Pop up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so that was like, and when that was really when I started like getting into like meanings and stuff and, you know, yeah, people, anyone could do a black square, but he did it first and the message was um, super clear and he was willing to fight for it. And it was just a really powerful thing to learn about and kind yeah. of change my opinion i love things that change my opinion yeah i, I like being challenged i do you know? too actually <laughs> yeah like i used to kind of be that way about like abstract expressionism yeah i was like ah anyone can do that but it's yeah i think it's more about like the context in which it happens like the social context like what's going on in the world at the time yeah i mean and it did, yeah. you know, it did come out later that some of those guys were funded by the CIA as a, uh, this is Who? just 
like uh, um, some of the abstract expressionists. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so, but, so there was like, <laughs> no, this is true. We'll look it up. We'll look it up later. I, <laughs> but um, I'm just going to go with yes. There's a black square. There's your black square. What about it? Nice. I know what it looks like. But they were, so <laughs> the CIA was secretly funding their art because yeah. they were like, it was during the Cold War, the height of the Cold War, or war. And uh, they were like, look how free we are over in America. We yeah. just sling paint at whatever. And then it, it was also to make like the Soviet like propaganda poster art just look yeah. even more like rigid and like. propaganda Yeah, exactly. And I really love that graphic design. You know what I mean? Yeah. The propaganda art. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's a little sidebar there. What were we talking about? Influences. Yeah. But so, I don't know. I guess that kind of really made me start approaching art differently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I was, that, changed, that, I was I talking guess about. I that's like a, yeah, kind of a bigger influence on what, I do, what I'm doing, you know? Mm -hmm. I was talking about having <laughs> opinions changed or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Getting challenged. Yeah, yeah. Like, make me change my mind. Yeah. And Seriously. I'm about it. I'm so open to it. I just don't really, like, hate on art so much anymore or like music like i used to you know i'm just yeah. like oh that's a thing cool it exists i don't care i'm not yeah. gonna give it my energy there's I'm no reason when you could be like excited about something, you know, else. something else you know yeah and um, it's just, i've just never been pretentious or anything like that so I was just oh like, i've I, been real pretentious i mean i was like i super pretentious. think i tried to be when i was like this a little punk kid but like 15 16 yeah see like, that carried over into adulthood it's an awful me. attitude to have yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I know best. Like, you can't listen to something because you're this way. You dress this way. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I don't get it. Yeah. If I want to listen, I listen to whatever the fuck I want. Exactly. I don't get it. Do you like Nickelback? I, no. <laughs> but That's if I want to listen to them, I'm gonna. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know what? I just feel like listening still... to Nickelback today. No. <laughs> don't do that. Um, so, do you have a strategy for being successful as an artist? Um, always telling yourself you're not, you know, there yet. You're not successful yet. Nice. Staying humble and fucking meeting the shit out of everybody. <laughs> Networking is so important. Yeah, definitely. But I actually enjoy meeting people. I know it's weird, but I really like meeting people. <laughs> I don't know. Even if there's one that burns you, there's like 10 or 15 that are just going to be crazy, supportive, rad, for you. supportive people. And, you know, you might benefit their life in some way, you know. So, uh, you know, a mutual kind of thing. But you like don't know unless you like put yourself out there. Yeah. No, you know, you can be a great artist, but no one's going to know you unless you like get it out there. Right. And that's another part of having that eight hours every day. Mm -hmm. um, that's really important. The people that kind of you know, take a leap of faith and try and follow their dreams. They like have the time to put themselves out there that the pe these other people might not have, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, all fucking hustle. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, I would say fucking just putting, you know, being nice to people. Yeah. <laughs> um, people That's huge, really right? like supporting good people and right. you know, it's really all we got. So like, I mean, you can be like one of the greatest artists and if you're an asshole, it really like, sucks. You won't be successful. <laughs> it really sucks because it doesn't have to be that way. We should all be supporting each other and like right, yeah. we can all thrive together. You know, it's just like it's really unfortunate that people have that mindset. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I agree. But that can only get you so far. I promise you that. Yeah, talent can well, only get you so far. Well, no, just like, you know, being successful and being a dick or. Well, that's what I'm saying. Or being like. like you, you can be super talented. But if you're not a nice person and you're not good to work with, yeah. like people aren't going to work. Yeah. And like, but you know, like some people do find success that way. But like I said, that like that will not last long. People will not want to work with you. And it's like, why do that? It could just be fucking all around a good time, man. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're here to have fun more or less. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of my We get to do the coolest shit when we're supported by so many people, you know, but we should yeah. be, you know, we should be all supporting each other. Yeah. Because it's not fun by yourself. I don't no, think so. It's not as fun. That's for no. sure. What's a, so what kind of advice do you have uh, for for networking? Like, if you're going to, like, if you go out, like, because, okay, 
we're talking about the social aspect of art, but then also there's a part of it where you're alone and you're just painting or you're creating something like when and why do you go out? What do you mean? To network? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, when do I choose to go do you, out? Do you strategize that at all? Or are you just like, like to I'll go out? balance it out with actually working? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, with quarantine, it wasn't really that hard of a thing to do because I was just working, you know? Sure, Because yeah. we were not really going out or spending money. But, um, I mean, you have to. I'm not the best at it, per se. <laughs> I feel like I could be better at it. But, you know quarantine and stuff is kind of like made me kind of hustle because I can't travel, you know, cause all our events got canceled, you know? Right. So <clears throat> yeah, kind of like is making me get on my game about like just, you know, doing stuff here and like, I don't know, finding walls and, you know, get on that game. I've definitely been working way more, but it is a struggle. That's, I probably struggle with that for sure. But I, I can't sit like, can't say that me, you know, going out and, you know, networking and stuff and, getting my art out there hasn't helped. I mean, it's definitely oh, helped course. so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's why I was asking. But like, I could make more work, you know. Like, I know quarantine's different, but if you go to an art show, do you go with, like, a purpose? Like, if you're going to a show, are you like, I'm going to try and at least talk mm -hmm. to someone I already know in the art world, or, like, yeah. I'm going to try I'm and meet gonna people? I'm just going to go hang out with my homies. Yeah. That's how I view it. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, how, so much, like no yeah, pressure how much fun is way. it? Yeah. We're a hoot. <laughs> We're a hoot. <laughs> We're a hoot. <laughs> Wildin'. <laughs> uh, I know, yeah, I got to shout out Mr. Melty since you said hoot. He oh, always says, really? you're a hoot. I thought about wearing his t-shirt, oh. but I wore it yesterday all day. Love you, Kevin. I love you, Tay, even more, maybe. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You guys can fight over it. So. Yeah. Love you, Tay. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you have uh, advice for any younger artist? Um, fucking don't waste time, like, bartending and <laughs> serving. Just go for it. I could, I mean, I did that for a while and I got, you know, it's really good money. I get it. You know, when you're young, you don't really even know what you want, to be honest with you. Totally. So, honestly, you can do whatever the fuck you want as long as it gets you to your goal, honestly. There is, like I said, there's no guidelines that I can just... Tell, tell people like what's helped me and it's exactly that it's just you know being nice and meeting people and right. actually like generally caring about what they're saying back to you you know totally um, that's probably been the number one thing so and I know people are more introverted or whatever but that's the hustle you gotta you know fucking introduce yourself that's what Becky taught me that she, she said introduce yourself to you don't have to anymore <laughs> it's a good one that's really good. Yeah. Shouts, yeah. Becky. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I should follow that advice. Yeah. She's yeah. the best. But it makes sense. And it's really true. You know, especially our communities are, our communities are really small. You know what I mean? We're all really linked in some way or another. You know, mm. reputation is everything. You know. Totally. Follow, nice. follow through. Follow through. Work your ass off then people can't tell you you don't deserve it, you know? Right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Try me. <laughs> I'm fucking hustling. Do you want me to, should we try this out right now? Try what out? You don't deserve it. <laughs> you said try Go me. Go fuck yourself. Nice. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay, there you have it. <laughs> I love you, I'm kidding. I know. <laughs> but for real. <laughs> um, <laughs> what else were we going to talk about? I know I had some other things. Oh, let's get back to the mural. I could talk all day, so you end it when you need to. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> yeah, so let's get back to the mural. Okay. What's the most important part of the mural process? Or do you think, I mean, obviously it's all important to a certain I'm, degree, but like, is it just maybe... Planning it out. Planning it out. Because you can save so much time. Yeah. Like, I would have bought so much more bucket paint if, but like us filling in just like the, you know, the faces and stuff. Mm-hmm. It really eliminated a lot. I was just going to go straight on with the gradient and I would have spent so much money on that learning lesson. Yeah. Learned real quick that day, <laughs> you know, but the design is everything. Cause it goes, I mean, you know, if you're wanting to get done fast and stuff. Yeah. iPad is great for that. I need one. 
lost mine. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I need an iPad so you can get RTAF t-shirts at andrewnorris.com. This guy. AndrewNorrisArts.com. I can't even say my own website right. <laughs> God. AndrewNorrisArts.com. RTAF t-shirts. $25 each. Just search RTAF. Whitney's going to wear one soon. I'll try to. Try oh. my best. Oh, you'll wear it. It's <laughs> black. I mean, we all love black. I've been on the all black tip again. That's kind of most of my clothes. I used to be like that for been, a long time, but I mean, and it's not I like a color game for a little bit, but it's not like a statement. I'm just like, I like this black t-shirt. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's like after all the protesting, I'm just like all black all the time. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally. We're squatting hard. You want to talk about that? <laughs> we can talk about that. What was it the was scariest wild. part of the protest for you? Um, seeing my homie get being right next to my homie when she got hit in the face with a rubber bullet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my baby. Shouts, girl. I love you, Megan. Shouts, Megan. We love you. You look great. She recovered quite well. <laughs> that's good. That's definitely good. But yeah, that shit's crazy. It's like surreal as fuck. <laughs> I wasn't there for all the craziness, but, you know, I came down for like the marches and stuff. I was ready for it. I was waiting for this. <laughs> They've been waiting Revolution, y'all. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of America right now. I don't want to get too, too, too political. Yeah, we don't here, have to. Yeah. I. Um, proud of everyone. Get, let's get back to murals. <laughs> Hell yeah. So how do you like. Take us through the process of like scoring a mural gig. What? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, like getting a wall? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I didn't hear you. I didn't process for a second. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, I just ask. You just ask until I mean, someone says yes. I mean, to be fair, like I have murals under my belt, so it's e it's easier for me now to just ask. Sure. But, I mean, you have to just keep at, at like asking until somebody lets you do it. And, and I mean, no, people can give you tips on them, but you have to actually like... No one's gonna tell you how to do a fucking hundred foot wall, like a right. thirty foot circle, like what? Right. Perfect. You know, like yeah. no one's gonna tell you how to. Like, you have to learn that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. You just kind of have to just like go ask businesses if you you know. I started with a I did a painted just a like, you know, with a brush and acrylic, um, at a dispensary in Colorado. Um, but mm. I worked for that, grow, okay. um, when I moved here, legally. Um, got my badge or whatever, but um, they were just thinking about getting a mural, and I, they knew I was an artist, so it was, you know, I can't, it's probably maybe like 10 feet, it wasn't that big, Yeah. but I did all brush, so I started with that, and I got experience, and I just kept putting my name out there, and I think the next one I did was like Halloween, actually. Oh, nice. It was like my second mural, it was, six, oh, yeah. it was like, six, I, <laughs> I told um, Anya, love you girl, um, yeah, that I would do one, like a 12 foot one. And I just have this like go big or go home mentality and I'm always up for the challenge and I get there and she's like, do you want a 16 foot one? And, a six, and I was like, let's go, yeah, <laughs> let's <yes>. do it. <laughs> and, um, but my design was the opposite. It was, my design was like longer, taller, but it was like wider. So my design like didn't really match up with it. So I had to like kind of figure something out and yeah. I was brushing and trying spray paint. It's just doing the background just to, you know, get the handle of it. Um, but I got that just by like posting all over, like, I mean, I don't even think I really knew Anya, but I was already in Denver for a little bit, but yeah, I was just posting all over Facebook, like get Winnie to Halloween. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it worked. <laughs> That's my, some my amazing networking graphic. skills though. My friend made a graphic for me. Sab, what's up? Love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he just made this graphic for me. I was like, dude, let's put, make a graphic and I'll post it and um, I have some homies that run the Halloween board down there, our like Facebook group and stuff, and uh, they were just blowing it up and nice. bumping it out. And I think Anya might have, everyone's like tagging Anya in it. So nice. Yeah, you got to make people, you know. Uh, Becky also told me this. She said, if you make enough noise, somebody will listen, you know, eventually. Totally. Um, so that's why, like, you know, like doing artwork and putting your name out there every single second, every day is like so important. If you, I mean, that's if that's 
the direction you want to go in your career if you right. you want to you know do this for a living yeah so so uh, what about this wall in particular <laughs> what about it like so we're painting on the side of a production company yeah how did this all fall into place just um just because of what's ever, what's going on right you know um the protesting and everything and um Everyone just wanted help. You know, I'm from here, so I, you know, worked out on 4th Street in Louisville. I was a marketing manager for one of the clubs down there. Mm -hmm. So I learned about, a lot about marketing there, too. But so I met people through downtown that, you know, own businesses here. And, you know, they led, you know, led me to another person. And, you know, it's a, the project is coming from a lot of love. So, and I know, like, a lot of people want to help in any way they can. And, um, you know, this is the way they can do it. So it was just by word of mouth and you know meeting people <laughs> you nice. know nice and i have some good homies that um introduced me to someone that found me the wall and the guy that owns the building is really he wanted to help and he didn't really know how and he just thought it was a really great idea and you know because a couple you know to be fair a couple of walls fell through like three walls fell through they all knew the subject matter but they wanted it to be the message to be a little toned down i guess mm. and i just didn't think that was um the purpose of what we were doing so right chad was all about it that owns the building and shouts chad yeah thanks man <laughs> doing a positive thing yeah um and everyone's gonna see you know their faces every time I, he said i think he said like nineteen thousand cars drive by the wall every day damn yeah that's awesome yeah but um can't wait but yeah so i just got linked from one person to the next and when it's a good cause and people don't know how to help and they can help that way they usually do just gotta ask love you love you <laughs> um so let's close it out with this question um is there a purpose or a mission with your artwork <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i was trying to think about that question but i just want to be a good person and make pretty things <laughs> yeah. yeah and you know, what like, does being a good person mean to you? Um, like giving when you can't. Yeah. Taking care of each other when we're already taken care of. You know? Yeah, totally. I know it sounds radical, but <sighs> <laughs> I guess that's really it. And like art really helps with all that. At least with me, it does. So. Yeah. It's just, I like I said, I don't know. I don't, I've never thought of, I was going to do anything else, but art, I didn't know at what in what way, but it had to be creative. Right. I can't sing, so. Me neither. <laughs> it's so bad. I mean, I kind of can, It's but it's like, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, so, and I really, you know, like painting and stuff, so. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast, Whitney. Thanks, but I'm sorry if I only went on like 10 tangents. But. No, you were great. <laughs> you were great. I got a little stoned. That's good. <laughs> nice shouts to blunts thanks for coming on love you love you <laughs>